a dirty pickup. Dirty, dirty. Morning, everybody. Feel like going to America today? We've got a trailer that's sitting at uh, gas tracks in Pembina, North Dakota, just over the border. And we gotta go pick it up and bring it back here. Remember our slogan? No man left behind. We believe in that up here. Someone left a trailer behind in America and we're gonna go and extract it and bring it home. Like I said last time, good thing our neighbors are our friends. I'm sure they're taking good care of it. Alright guys, off we go, eh? Off we go. We got no trailer behind us right now, we're bobtailing. Let's try this 120 frames per second. Twice as many as we usually use. I usually use 60 frames per second. It all depends uh, how I render it as well. She's calling. She's calling. Trucker Josh, come get your trailer. I hear her. Hold on to your pants, everybody. We're going south of the border. She's coming up to U.S. Customs here. Just got to go about one mile past the line down into America. So not too far again today, but we can say that we went to America today. That is a factual statement. As soon as we cross past the Canadian customs here on our left, we are on US soil. Which means I will talk to you on the other side. We'll talk to you in a bit. Of course, just as I'm about to pick up my trailer, it starts to rain. Look, okay, they got a new sign here, North Dakota. Be legendary. Don't tell me how to live my life, North Dakota. Well, this is really good. We're getting some pretty good rain right now. Uh, about two months too late, but hey, we'll take it, I'm sure. Raise up our water levels a little bit here. All of Manitoba, uh, northwestern Minnesota, and North Dakota. Well, we've all been in a drought this year. Some uh, smaller rivers have even almost dried up. You can walk right across them. So this rain is uh, welcome. It's a little late, but better late than never. You know, the guy upstairs always likes to make an entrance. He always takes longer than everyone thinks he will, you know? And these wonderful interstate on and off ramps. They just make so much sense. It almost hurts the brain. Look at this, you get off the highway, nice long exit ramp to slow down so you don't have to slow down on the highway. Nice overpass to go over the highway so you don't have to risk, you know, getting T-boned by someone or, or, or anything along those lines. We got Border Patrol right here making sure us Canadians stay in line. It's a good day. It's a good day. I guess that rain was kind of short lived, eh? Shouldn't have said anything. Tied down. I kind of hope they did so I don't have to tie it down on this mess. Oh, 
I'll probably just have to tighten the straps because it seems like some people, uh, well, the last load I picked up here, they didn't tighten the straps. They were all loose. Kind of scary. But you always got to remember, stop and tighten your straps. As the load settles, uh, the straps get loose. Yeah, there it is right there. Trailer 128. Yeah, it's all tied down. Somewhat tied down, anyway. So I don't know why this trailer was left here. And I don't know why the last trailer was left here. I I didn't think we did that very often, but maybe we have drivers that only stay in the US. So they bring the loads up to the border here, then I come and grab them. I don't think we have anyone like because in order to work with us, you have to have Canadian citizenship and the ability to live and work in Canada. Or at least the ability to, yeah, well, yeah, the legal ability to work. So, there's probably a reason for it, but, uh, you know, it's a need-to-know basis, I guess. And all I need to know is I have to hook up to this and bring it back to the yard. Let's take a look at what we're uh, dealing with here. Oh, yeah, they're loose. I don't know what this is. Oh, that one's tight. Feels like plastic. Okay. Tight, tight, tight. Just one strap over this? And just one over that? Really? I'm gonna add another one on there for sure. Another one on here. It's a little risky just having one. And there's this back here. Yikes, cardboard's getting all wet now. Okay, well. Let's get this done and hooked up and get out of here before it starts to rain any harder again. Well, got a little wet out here, but that's okay. I feel much better about my load. Uh, just because someone else ties down a load for you, uh, don't always trust it, okay? I don't trust anybody. Always double check it and make sure it meet, meets your standards. For me at the back here, there's only one strap over this, these two bundles, and one strap over that bundle. Now, weight-wise, it's enough, right? But you want... At least I want to have two straps over here to stop this thing from shifting and to secure it better. So I sat out here in the rain, tightened the straps that needed tightening, and added straps where I felt straps were needed. So just because someone else left it tied down, don't just assume it's good. Because if something falls off and it's hooked up to your truck while you're driving, that's on you. You can't say, well, the other driver tied it down that way. No one's gonna buy that, no one's gonna listen to that. It's gonna be your fault. Tie it down so that you feel comfortable with it. I feel a lot better about this. And yes, it was not fun getting all soaking wet, but at least I know that I feel better about what uh, my load securement looks like back there. And it's back to Canada we go. You can see the border from where we were. It's literally just like a mile. I think it's almost exactly a mile inside the US. This is North Dakota here. Welcome to North Dakota. If I didn't tell you it was the US, would you know? Our two countries are so similar. Very different in some ways, but to anyone who is not from Canada or the US, they probably assume we're the same thing. We look the same, we sound the same, we act the same, we eat the same. But uh, once you get to know us, there, there are differences. There are definitely differences, but they're minuscule compared to uh, other things. We are very close friends. We have the longest unprotected border in the world. Don't get me wrong, there are border checkpoints. You have to check in at the border, but uh, there's no military. It's a demilitarized border. Absolutely no military on either border. No buildup anyways. You know, We watch each other. We watch each other, keep an eye on each other, but, you know. We're not worried about uh, problems on this border. I'll see you on the Canadian side. I can't film here. Well, we're just getting going now. We're on the Canadian side. I don't know if you can see the Canadian border out the window there, but... 
I had to wait here for two hours. Paperwork was, uh, something wrong with the paperwork. I don't know, it was something that hadn't happened to me before. Uh, there was a glitch in the system. And my trip number got cancelled. The trip number is for our purposes, not for the border's purposes. My PARS sticker, my PARS number, my entry number for the border purposes, those were good. They were legit and uh, everything went through there. But our trip number for our records had been cancelled in their system, so they couldn't let me cross. I know, I called into the office, I'm like, I don't know why they care about our records, but our records apparently were cancelled. But their records are good, but they don't want me to go until our records are good too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to think of that. The scale's open. Goody. Let's go show them how bad we are. I had a really good supper yesterday. They're going to be so disappointed in me. Probably gained a few pounds again. It's a really good thing that I went and uh, secured the load better. I don't think these guys here... Uh, in the scale house would like the way the load was tied down before. I wonder if the guy took some straps off before leaving the trailer there. That's what I want to believe. I, I want to believe that, that wasn't, it wasn't pulled down the highway like that. Because that load could easily shift the way it was tied down. But I'm sure he took some straps off and uh, you know, didn't want to leave all his straps there or something. Must have been what happened. But. always want to use more straps than you think you'll need. You look at it and you're like, ah, oh, one strap would hold that down. No, 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 you better put two. All right, and if you're looking at it, you're like, you know what? Three straps will do. Put four, five if you're feeling lucky. Okay, stop before the scale. Go on the scale, roll the window down in case they want to yell at me. I'm in there looking at my load. Give them my trailer weights here. The green light. Come on, give me the green light. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Water. 
and uh, the ground goes downwards here. All the water drains towards the Hudson's Bay up north, up there. But for a very long time, there was a huge glacier up there blocking all of the waters, the melted glaciers here. That bird just got hit by that car. Did you see that? <laughs> Rest in peace, little birdie. <laughs> right for me. Yikes. Uh, anyways, <laughs> that was distracting. When all of this ice down here melted and turned to water, it flowed north. Because the Red River here flows north. Everything drains into the Hudson's Bay around here, right? But there was, like I said, a big wall of ice, a big glacier that was blocking the floodwaters from entering the ocean. So this turned into a big freshwater lake. Long time ago. So that brought in lots of fertile soil that we have now. Now we're sort of the breadbasket of Canada. This is, uh, you know, the fertile lake bed. It's interesting to think about these things when you learn the history of the area you live in. And then, you know, as the climate kept warming and warming, eventually the ice dam up north, that glacier, melted away far enough that this water here could all drain into the Hudson's Bay. And that must have been like a cataclysmic, world-changing event because it was like a, a huge inland ocean of fresh water got dumped into the ocean all at once raising the ocean levels, oh, who knows, a couple hundred feet, maybe a hundred feet. That could be when uh, the UK, as we know it today, became an island and became disconnected from Europe. I mean, these are the things that I believe. But, who knows, I wasn't there to see it, so not like I can say, this is exactly what happened. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a geologist, but I do read a lot. And from, from what I've read, that theory makes the most sense. That was a lot of random javelin. Well, what about your area where you're from? Have you ever researched like the, the history of the area you live in? Like what it was like thousands of years ago? Because if I travel back in time to this exact spot a few thousand years ago, I would be sitting on top of a glacier. Actually, I'd be sitting under a glacier. I'd be getting crushed. I would be dead. The thoughts that go through the mind of Trucker Josh while he's staring out the windshield, I tell you, I got lots more save some some of the others for another time but it sort of bugs me when everyone sort of panics and says everything's heating up and I know it is and we're probably not helping that especially driving trucks and stuff and emitting so much CO2 we're probably making things heat up faster than they would have naturally I'll give you that but I mean if if things weren't warming up I I think this land would be kind of useless up here. I mean, who wants to buy a plot of land under a glacier? Nobody wants that. Sort of raised the property values around here, if you ask me, when the ice was melted away. It's not all bad when things get warmer. You don't want it to get too warmer or people start frying alive. You don't want that either. And you know, if the experts are saying we should be worried, well, maybe we should have our antennas up and. pay attention to what they have to say. But anyway, this all stemmed from the fact that we're getting rain now. We've been in a drought all summer, so it's very nice to see the water falling from the sky. It's nice to see water pooled up in the ditches. It's good. I knew we'd be okay. This would be very good for the forest fires too. Get rid of all those forest fires. Diesel, how would you like to come with me to work? You want to go in the truck? Yeah. Oh, oh, I think Chevy might want to come sometimes too. I miss having you with me in the truck, buddy. Chevy, what are you doing? What are you doing? I want to come with you to work. I can go trucking. You're going to be scared. It's a lot of noises in there, man. You sure? Tough guy? Diesel, I know every once in a while you would love to come along. I would really like to make this work. I'm, I'm thinking of making a, a little bit of a platform in front of the passenger seat. I think I've told you this before. Uh, just, just a simple thing you can just throw in there and you can take out at any time. Nothing permanent. Just something like a platform. 
and then put a blanket or a bed over it so that it, it turns into a nice little place for him to lay down, right? And then uh, he doesn't have to like be crammed on this little seat the whole day. He sort of have like a little bed area there. And then on the days when I know that I'm just, you know, taking off to Kenora and back or, or uh, doing some other just highway driving, you know, he can come with me every now and then. I think that'd be all right. I think that would work. Okay. What do you guys think? You guys want to see more of Diesel? I miss the, the conversation. Talking to myself is just not the same. I like it when he when I, when I have him there to talk with and when he talks back. It's just not the same when it's just me talking all the time. So what do you say, Diesel? It, I, it probably can't be every day. Every now and then? Maybe? <laughs> Don't get my hopes up, man. Don't get my hopes up. Are you serious? I am paralyzed with happiness. Except for my tail. Is it just me or is this thing shaking? This thing was shaking like that just a second ago. Heh! <laughs> Ghosts. Thanks for watching today, everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I had a great week, and uh, I'll see you again on Monday, if not sooner. Take care, everybody.